nectar of devotion. This is lesson number three. And we still have to finish the group work from yesterday. Yes. Right? Are yes. the Chinese ladies I'll here? I'll L start the recording. Little avatar. Little avatar, Nizaima. Recording in progress. Put, yeah, put your camera on. I want to see you. Okay. Meilin, Nizaima. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, Jai. Okay. As Sitala. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. The way you can down me. Okay. Right. Okay, so did you do the homework? Yes. Yes, we did. Okay. So, read out the first question. I'll share the first question, brother. Okay, for group group A, the first question was what? Just. Oh, you got it? Just a second. Just give me one minute. Okay. Uh, yes. 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 Can you see? Uh, I should read. Uh, a new devotee wants to take initiation from a pure Vaishnava guru uh, who has many disciples in the zone. Uh, because he will get a better facility after initiation. So, is that pure devotional service or mixed? Hare Krishna, uh, uh, Hare Krishna Gurmash, after we discussion, we have conclusion. I think we think it's a mix. Because uh, it's not considered as a pure devotion, there has two situations. One is if the devotee uh, he gets the in uh, in 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 initiation from from guru, he wants to get the better facility. If he wants to get more education with devotees, he wants to improve his Krishna consciousness. He wants to do more better service for Krishna. Uh, we think it is, is good, it's pure devotion. But uh, if he wants to get the material fat, uh, facility, he wants to have a bigger community. He wants to do some like uh, business. He wants to do some uh, yeah, material things uh, in the community. It's not a pure, de uh, pure devotion of our Krishna. Okay. Uh, All right. Situation. Did yes. everybody agree? Number one, not pure devotion. Yes? Okay, number two. Sitala, read. Uh, for ten temple, Pudari accepts uh, finished uh, many things from the temple for his Bihasa maintenance. Okay, a full-time temple pujari accepts financial maintenance from the temple for his grihastha maintenance. Is that pure devotion? Or not? Sitala, is this pure devotion? Yes, Maharaj. Why? Because Pujari doing the seva for deities, um, he just accept uh, money for maintaining his Grihastha life. Okay, I agree. Everybody agree? Everyone agrees? Okay. Number three, Milan. A devotee that cook cooks offering of yoga for the deity in the temple and he often burns the preparation. Um, this we, we, we think is, is Sita, it's pure devotion or mixed. Sita. Ah? 
我们最后讨论是是是是混合在一起的还是纯粹的呀？因为咕噜有说是混合的。当时我们讨论的是混合的意思。Uh, Maharaj, we are not sure because, uh, he cook daily for that is this is pure devotion to the service. But、uh, he always burn the boga, so I don't know how much love he had. Right, I agree. Not very pure devotion. If it burns every day, if burning a food every day all the time, burning is not good. Means it's not thinking of Krishna. Not doing very proper cooking. Not good cooking. And so if, if every day is cooking, its cooking should improve. You should become expert. But if every if it's often burning, that means it's not taking care. It's not cooking nicely for Krishna. So he's not thinking of Krishna very well. So not pure devotion. Okay. All right. Number four, little avatar. Little avatar. Oh, I'm sorry. Um. Okay. Has that put here properly? Facing the feet of Vaishnava, visiting his home,、uh, we we think it's uh, uh, pure devotion. Why?、Uh, because he is、uh, this is、uh, Vaishnava etiquette. He is、uh, serving、uh, devotees, devotees which is very dear to the Lord. If the devotee allows. To bathe their feet. Not everybody wants to get their feet bathed. Ah、uh, yes, yes, yes. So what they do in India is not what they do everywhere. In China, we couldn't、oh. do that. Yes. <laughs> right, but in India,、yes. in India, you may do that. You may want to bathe the feet of the devotee. Okay, very good. Okay, Group B. Thank you, Group A. Now, Group B. Yes, Madhuji. Done about pronouns. Read the question. Question is: A devotee makes light members because he can keep ten percent of his collection for his own use. So,、uh, Madhuji, we discussed that、uh, it is not pure devotional service. Because that devotee has some motive、uh, or some desire, which is not、uh, for Krishna, but it is for his own personal use, and it does not comes under Tadat、uh, Silakshana and Swaruk Silakshana,、uh, because、uh, it is not done for Krishna and not to serve by Krishna, so it is not pure devotional service. Okay. Yes. Good. I agree. Everybody agree. Yes. Okay. Number number six. Ah,、uh, a grihast devotee works in an office to maintain his family, who are all Vaishnavas. Ah,、uh, Maharaj, we think that this is also a devotional service because the devotee is working on to maintain his family, who are also ah、uh, first of all devotees, and his ah、uh, and the goal is to satisfy. Krishna and his purpose is centered towards Krishna. So, is it pure devotion? Ah,、uh, yeah. Well, it is working just to maintain his family. Does he do anything for Krishna? I don't know. We don't know. He's working. Is he making money? Does all the money go to the family? He doesn't give anything to Krishna. If all the money goes just for the family, and there's nothing for Krishna, 
Let's not Hare Krishna pu- Maharaj. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So what we uh, assumed was that since it says uh, his family members are also Vaishnavas, a Grihastha devotee works in an office to maintain his family who are all Vaishnavas. So Vaishnavas are um, uh, devotees of the Lord. And uh, in Swarupa Lakshana, we also saw that uh, um, Krishna's pure devotees are also a part of uh, Anukuliyana Krishna Anushiranam. The Krishna includes Krishna and his pure devotees. So we assumed that uh, because it's men- uh, mentioned as Vaishnavas, um, they are pure devotees, and that is the reason uh, we we thought it is it could be pure devotional service. Yeah, but it depends. If he gives a hundred percent, if all the money goes on the family, then mm, it, you know it doesn't yeah. it, it doesn't give any money to temple. It doesn't give any charity. That's, then that would be a problem, right? If all yes, the money, if all the money just goes on the family, and you don't have any money to give to anybody else, you don't give any money to temple, you don't give any money to sannyasi, you don't give any money to guru. It's not very good. Hmm? There should be should be some Rupa Goswami. When he retired, he divided the money. He didn't give all the money to the family, right? And Prabhupada talked about people who go to Vrindavan, they retire in Vrindavan, and they give all the money to the family. And they come to Vrindavan, they have no money. But, the, but they give all their money to their family. That's not pure devotion. And so we have to consider carefully. Okay. What about number seven? A uh, Grihastha devotee performs Karvadana Samstara in order to dedicate to Krishna conscious children. Uh, Maharaj, uh, we discussed that uh, this is also pure devotional service because, uh, like we discussed yesterday, the Grihastha devotee brings uh, uh, with the intention to serve Krishna in order to get Krishna conscious children and uh, it is pleasing to Krishna and yes Maharaj we said that it's also pure devotional service. Yes, yeah I agree. I think it is pure devotion. Krishna says, I am that sex life which is not against religious principles. So yes, it's pure devotion. All right. Number eight. A devotee gives a picture of Goddess Kali on his altar because he can bestow wealth on a worshippers. So, Maharaj, we discussed that this is not a devotional service because uh, it is not centered towards Krishna at all. He has a motive. Um, oh, okay. We, so he has a motive so that he can get wealth if he worships Goddess Kali. Yes, right. It's not pure devotion. Right. We don't worship Kali, we don't worship the demigods, and we don't worship for material desires. Okay, very good. Go on, group number C. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Well, wait. Can you read the question for us? Number one? No, oh, number nine? Number nine, a Sankirtan devotee regularly cleans his vehicle at the car wash because he considers the vehicle Krishna's property. So this one we discussed, it is pure devotional service because the car vehicle is Krishna's property. It's Krishna, no, it's Krishna's paraphernalia. So it's related to Krishna. So then we think it's pure devotional service. Okay. Yeah. Might be better if he washed it himself rather go to the car wash. <laughs> it's a, that's the lazy way to cl- clean the car, right? You pay other people to clean the car for you. I don't know. You're paying other people to clean the car. You sit, you sit, you stand back and watch them clean the car. <laughs> okay, number 10. A guest visits a temple and gives a donation for the Seva Puja of the deity. This one we're discussing, you yourself mentioned yesterday as well, that this is not pure devotional service. 
We weren't sure which exactly uh, category it fit in. We were thinking maybe it's anashilanam. It's not constant cultivation or activity following the Buddhas or Charyas. He's only every now and then giving the meditation when he goes to Diti. We don't know what else he's doing outside of that. Yes, it may be something like a Gyata Sukriti, you know, doing some pious activity. And we don't know what his motive is in giving donation. So this one was not pure devotion service we discussed? Yeah. And 11, a devotee keeps a picture of Nishramadev on his altar because he can remove obstacles in devotional service. This one we, dis we weren't sure at first, but we discussed it is pure devotional service. Nishramadev is pleased to remove the obstacles in devotional service when we thought it's uh, Anukulyena. Krishna gets pleasure from it, and it's also favorable to Krishna consciousness. It's favorable to devotional service. Okay, everybody agree? Yes, yeah. I yes, think. yes, I think so. Okay, good. Yes, number 12. A brahmachari attends Mangalartika every day because he wants to maintain his position on the temple council. This one we discussed is not pure devotional service. He has his own personal motive. It's Anya Bilasita Sanyam. He wants to become something in the temple council, someone's own position. So it's not pure devotional service. Okay, everybody agree? Yes. yes. Agree? Yes, okay. All right. Very good, Prabhu. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Group D. D. Yes. Number 13. Number 13. A devotee performs fasting every Ekadashi because he may receive the boon of getting a son. No, this is not, uh, uh, this is not a pure devotional service. Because he has a, uh, means, uh, uh, because he has a desire, is doing the fasting only for uh, in return of some fruit, fruits. That's why it's not uh, a pure devotional service. Mm -hmm. Agree? Krishna Maharaj, but yeah. if the son uh, is, I mean, same thing as we discussed in the previous. Um, if, if he does the Garbhadana Samskara, all that is not given over here, but then if he does it in order to get a Krishna conscious child, then what, maybe... What I it. think here is because he is only desiring for the son. He is desiring for a son, that's why he is doing Ekadashi. Once the son is born, he will not do Ekadashi. Yeah, certainly some material motive there. He wants the sun. Anyways, number next one. Next one, a devotee collects donations and regularly performs festival for the Lord in his temple at home. Actually, <laughs> Maharaj, we had uh, two different views, me and Sashikant Prabhu. What I thought is, uh, yes, if, if he is collecting money and uh, spending it for the... Uh, for the pleasure of Krishna, maybe at a, a temple at his home, it's okay. But Sashi Khan Prabhu feels that no, it's not pure devotional service. We are a bit confused with this. Yeah, I'd like to hear Sashi Khan. Why is not pure devotional service? What's his reason? Hare Krishna, one of the principles is that we have to, they are supposed to give charity, not to accept charity. So mm. when they are receiving donation, and the donation is totally meant for the temple service. Not for the personal use, even for the dating at home. They should spend their own money on services and for the dating at home. Mm. Yes, it's true. Grihastas, he's collecting donations for his own festival in his house. <laughs> so people come for the festival and they're thinking, oh, he's so pious. <laughs> But he went, well, of course he did, he had to go and collect the donations. But he's spending the hundred percent for the pleasure of Krishna. Is he? It's, the question says that. Doesn't say that. <laughs> Doesn't say that. Okay. 
we don't know we don't know what is what is doing it certainly could be controversial yes a devotee collecting donations does a festival in his own home hmm? you don't know has has he has that devotee got money himself you know he's having the festival in his home mm -hmm. So everybody's coming to his home, and they're thinking, oh, this man's so nice. <laughs> but he collected all the money from other people. Of course, he had to go and collect it, he had to go and get it. Yes. So, it, it's, sometimes it can be a problem. And we don't know, is there a temple in the area? Is there another temple nearby? <laughs> is there, is but Peter there... used to say that, for the Lord. Mm -hmm. What did you say? We cannot hear you. You have a problem with your mic? Um, oh, 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 my internet is, is uh, unstable. Yes, I know. It's for the Lord, I think. Yes, it, festival. It is, it is very obvious for the Lord. Yeah, it's a festival for the Lord, but it's in his in the temple at home, his own temple at home. And so you're going actually, if actually, you, Maharaj, uh, if that person maybe he's having a temple at home, but he's not financially that much sound to perform the expenses for the festivals and all. Yes, but is is getting donations from other people. So you don't know you don't know how much he's spend how much he's collecting and how much he's spending for the festival. You don't know. And he's doing the festival at home. So yeah, he'll buy the boga. And so, you know, see, probably it's better, you do a festival at home, you can invite people to come and you can ask them, bring a preparation with you. You bring one preparation with you and we will have the festival. But if you, if you ask people, give donation and then you take the money from them, they, they, you don't, they don't know how you're spending the money. They don't know how much money you're collecting and how you're spending the money. But if you ask them, just can you bring, if you ask people, you come my home and bring, you can bring one preparation with you. And then that's nice. And then you can share the preparations. But when it's money, when you're involved with money, then it's a problem. There has to be accounts. You're collecting money, you're get, taking money from people. How much money are you spending? Where is the money going? That's the problem. Krishna Maharaj? Yes? Can we look at this as, um, uh, um, you know, a way to purify other member, others' money also? So maybe um, this person is um, you know, he is, he, he is a Vaishnava, he is doing the festivals and uh, the others may not be devotees. So in case he collects money from them and then uses it for maybe flowers or cooking, the others may not be uh, qualified enough to uh, cook for the Lord. So in that case, uh, he, uh, isn't it, uh, is it okay to think that, you know, they are puri he, is, he is helping in their Sukriti and he is purifying their money. So is it okay to think like that? Well, like I say, you know, when, it's in, when money is involved, you have to be very careful. You have to show everything. You have to put a, the account, show how much money you collected, Every, you know, you can show the, even the name of each person, what they gave and how much money you collected and how you spent it. You have to be very clear about everything. You're asking money from people, that's a responsibility. 
So you have to show that that money has been used properly for the service of Krishna. Now if you can't show that, then they won't, they, they, they will have doubts. We don't know how much did you collect, you know? How much did you collect? How much did you spend? You say you're the Vaishnava. The Vaishnava, just because you're a Vaishnava, you come and you ask donation, you ask them donation for the festival. So if you're asking donation for the festival, you have to spend the money for the festival. You have to show how you spent it. So you want flowers, you can ask them, can you bring some flowers? Why you have to ask, ask money from people? You see, some people, what they do, they get the money, then they go to the market and they beg the flowers. <laughs> they beg the flowers, they get the flowers donated. Then say, oh, but we got all these flowers, we got all these vegetables, they got them all donated in the market. It's a little tricky. Okay, anyway, number 15. 15. Yeah. A devotee regularly performs yogasan to keep himself fit for preaching Krishna consciousness. I think this comes under Anushilan. Okay, because he's keeping himself fit because he, uh, he, was, he wants to do, uh, he wants to uh, preach for Krishna. Mm. This is pure devotion. Oh. Well, can you get fit dancing in the kirtan? Yes. Why doesn't he just go and dance in the kirtan? You can get fit there. Go on Harinam, get fit dancing in the streets. Why he has to do yoga asanas? Okay. You, conduct, you, can, you want to keep fit, go out and sing kirtan. You get fit. What do you say? Yes, yes, very true, very true. Because he is he is good at it. It's easy for him uh, to perform yoga set. <laughs> What's that got to do with Krishna consciousness? Huh? What What does that got to do with? He's good at yoga. Is that Is that good for Krishna consciousness? Here it is said, uh, uh, keep fit for preaching. Well, I say keep fit, go on Harinam, go on Sankirtan, go and dance in the Kirtan. And another consideration is that the person has some uh, problem. Uh, and the doctor has recommended that you should go through these uh, exercises. And so is that okay in that case? Well, you can tell the doctor, you can ask the doctor, can I go for Harinam Sankirtan? <laughs> not, it's not yoga asana, it's not the only way to keep fit. There are many ways to keep fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, number 16. Read. An ISKCON guru travels to meet Middle East for preaching because Indian people there can donate more money than people in India. So this is no. Hmm? This, is a, this is a pure no. Because he has a motive behind it. But his motive is for Krishna. Huh? It's going to give the money for Krishna. The money is all going to Krishna. But Maharaj, here, uh, here this uh, motivation is really not very much clear that uh, purpose is to preach Krishna consciousness. Here the motivation is to collect more money. Wow. Well, we need money for the temples, right? You got to build the temple. Look at all the temples we have in India. Where did they get the money? Yeah. Maharaj, if you preach properly, then automatically money will come. Well, it comes a lot quicker in the Middle East. <laughs> you know, 
How do you think they distribute so many books in Mayapur? How do Mayapur devotees distribute so many books? The money that is sponsored by people in the Middle East, they give the money to distribute. Sir, if, if, if you are taking money and then in that situation we are taking care of their Krishna consciousness in that proportion, then, then it's okay. Yes. It's not, it's not that just taking money and then neglecting their uh, spiritual life and not taking care of and be only believe no. in No, we agree. We see there's many devotees here in Mayapur, they come from the Middle East. They were in the Middle East and then they came and retired in Mayapur, took up service in the Middle East, took up service here in Mayapur. Before they were working in Middle East and they came back, came back to Mayapur to retire, to do service. And so they make devotees. But yeah, we shouldn't just think only to make money. We preach everywhere, we go everywhere for preaching. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Prabhupada in the beginning, in the, in the beginning, a devotee wanted, they wanted to go to Bangladesh and Nepal. And Bangladesh and Nepal, you know, quite poor, very poor, even poorer than India. So Prabhupada gave money. Prabhupada said, I will give money to help the preaching. Every month he was, Prabhupada would give money for the preaching there. They wanted them to go to poor country, Bangladesh and Nepal. Wherever you can get results, you should go. If you get results, that's the main thing. All right. So, I hope that was useful for everyone. Hare Krishna. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. So we'll go ahead now. We're going on to lesson three. All right, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Six characteristics of devotional service. Oh, a lot of Sanskrit. <laughs> a lot of Sanskrit. All right, six characteristics of devotional service. We're going to explain all of these six words. We'll explain them one by one, right? Klesh Agni Subhada Moksha Laguta Krit Sudurlaba Sandra Nandana Vishesh Atma and Sri Krishna Karshini. Right? So the first one. Oh, by the way, did you all get waves of devotion? Yes. Yes, we received. You received it. Okay. Yes. You'll find it useful. It's very helpful. Try to read it. Okay, so first word, klesh agni, klesh agni, pure devotional service brings immediate relief from all kinds of material distress. All right, do you, are you ever in distress? Yes. Really? Yes, ma'am. Really? Just a little bit, right? Yes, prior to coming to uh, Krishna consciousness was very much in distress. Now the distress fades away very soon. Oh, good, good, very nice. Okay, so devotional service brings immediate relief from all kinds of material distress. But you have to, it says, pure devotional service, right? So you have to make sure your devotional service is pure. That's the point. There is a quality. There's a quality in devotional service. There is quality in, just like quality in cooking. Somebody cooks and they burn the offering. Every time they burn the food. 
not very good, you, everything burned. So pure devotional service will bring immediate relief. We have to do the service very pure. Okay, next word, Shubhada. Shubhada, pure devotional service is the beginning of all auspiciousness. Auspiciousness. Do you know this word, Sitala? Yes, Maharaj. Auspiciousness. Do you know this word, Sitala? Yes, Maharaj. Very good. Yes. So this is the beginning of all auspiciousness. Next word, moksha laguta krit. Those in pure devotional service deride even the conception of liberation. Deride. I mean, they, they don't even care about it. We don't even care about that liberation. Why would we care about liberation? No, why? Because we have devotional service. So devotional service is much greater than liberation. Right? We don't care for liberation. We only want Krishna's service. Next word. Sudur Labha, pure devotional service is rarely achieved. Oh, see, rarely achieved. Not so easy to get it. You make it sound so nice, but then we say, very difficult to get, very rare. Right? So we have to understand it's something very special, very valuable. Sandrananda Vishesh Atma. Pure devotional service automatically puts one in transcendental pleasure. Pure devotional service puts one in transcendental pleasure. So, when we're doing very, when we do pure service, we will feel pleasure, we will feel very happy in serving Krishna. And then, final one, Sri Krishna Karshini, pure devotional service, the only means to attract Krishna. How to attract Krishna? Pure devotional service, nothing else, not mixed devotional service, must be pure. Okay, so sadhana bhakti. We are doing sadhana bhakti. What does sadhana mean? Means you follow the regulated principles. What are the regulative principles of bhakti? Melin? Do you know? Uh, yeah, regu uh, regular sadhana is uh, chanting sisra and uh, the follow false principles and uh, go to Mangalarti, get up early, go to Mangalarti, chanting, chanting, yeah. chanting sisra. Yeah. Yes, good, good. Go to Mangalarti, worship Tosi, see the deities, hear Srimad Bhagavatam. This is sadhana bhakti, right? I have a question about the go to Mangalarti. In this situation, we all get, uh, we all see online, online, online Mangalarti. We all join the Mang online Mangalarti is okay. Or we also need to go to the temple. No, you can go online. Yeah, that's also good because COVID, yeah, it's not very safe. If you go online, it's also good. Okay. 
Of course, some people, they just lay in bed, they turn on television, open the eyes, and then after Mangalati, then they close the eyes again, go back to sleep. Right? That's not very... You know, sadhana means we're supposed to wake. Prabhupada said everyone should get up by four o'clock in the morning. Supposed to get up by four o'clock in the morning, take bath, and then, okay, then you turn on your computer, you can watch Mangalati on computer, if you like. You can do that. It's not as good as going to temple, but it's okay. All right, so Tadana Bhakti, first of all, oh, the, oh okay, so there are two. Sadhana, this is Sadhana Bhakti. There are three kinds of bhakti, right? This is sadhana bhakti. After sadhana bhakti, then bhava bhakti. And after bhava bhakti, then what? Prima bhakti, right? Prima bhakti. So first is sadhana bhakti. You do sadhana bhakti, then you come to bhava bhakti. And then from bhava bhakti, then you come to prima bhakti. So sadhana bhakti means devotional service in practice. We are practicing. So first of all, you get klesh agni, meaning relief from all the distress, relief from all the misery, the anxiety of material life. And shubhada means the beginning of all auspiciousness making everything auspicious. So these two, these are the two things which you get when you do sadhana bhakti. These two things. This is a benefit which comes when you do bhakti, sadhana bhakti. Now bhava bhakti. You see bhava bhakti, you get four things. The first two was there in the bhava, in sadhana bhakti. The first two were there before. Relief from distress, the beginning of auspiciousness. But then two more are added. You get moksha laguta krit, meaning you don't even care about liberation. And sudurlaba. Sudurlaba means, remember what it means? Rarely achieved. Huh? Not very easy. Very rare. Very rare, yeah. Right. So, those two, four benefits in Bhava Bhakti. Now, Prima Bhakti, right? We had Bhava, we had Sadhana Bhakti, two benefits. Bhava Bhakti, four benefits. Prima Bhakti, six benefits. Six benefits. We've got First of all, klesh agni, relief from distress. Subhada, beginning of auspiciousness. Moksha laguta krit, surpasses liberation. Sudurlaba, rarely achieved. San, now we've got two more. Sandrananda vishesh atma, meaning puts one in transcendental pleasure. Transcendental bliss. And Sri Krishna Karshini. Sri Krishna Karshini means the only way to attract Krishna. You cannot attract Krishna any other way. Okay, so those are the six characteristics. We're going to speak about these six things this morning. We want to understand them, the benefits we get. All right. Klesh Agni. First of all, Klesh Agni. Klesha mean material suffering. Right? 
Do you know what do you, what do you know the three kinds of suffering we get in the material world? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, you can tell us, Maharaji. Adhyatmika, Adi Bhautika and Adi Daivika. Yes. Adhyatmika is sufferings out of our own body and mind. Adi Bhautika is sufferings uh, inflicted due to other living entities. And Adi Daivika is sufferings due to uh, demigods or natural calamities. Yes, very good, right. So, Klesha. There's Adi Atmic Klesha, Adi Daivik Klesha, Adi Bhautik Klesha. Three different kinds of suffering, all material. There's only suffering in the material world. In the spiritual world, there's no suffering. So, the, the material suffering, we're all suffering material life. But devotional service destroys the suffering will stop the suffering. We say pure devotional service brings immediate relief from all kinds of material distress. Just like, oh, you may say, oh, I'm suffering material distress. I have, I have no money. So what kind of misery is that? Is that antibiotic? or Adi Admik, or Adi Daivik. What do you say, Madhiji? I, I have no... It is Adi Admik, Adi Admik, uh, Maharaj. Adi Admik, misery due to the body. Yeah. It, it could be Adi Daivik, Adi Daivik, Maharaj also, because if someone supposed, in some planet, in different country, like earthquake, yeah. and all these things, if he, someone loses his property, so then it becomes this. If it's earthquake, then what kind of suffering is it? This is uh, Adi Daivik. Adi Daivik, right. Yeah. Mm. So, so that also puts us in material distress. If there's earthquake, then your house falls down. You have no house to live in. You'll feel very bad. So material suffering is there. Okay, so here's a quote. Somebody like to read for us? Who's going to read? May I? Yes, Prabhu, go ahead. Kleshagni. Simply by chanting the holy name of Krishna once, a person is relieved from all the reactions of a sinful life. Sri Chaitanya Charitrame Madhya Leela 15.107. Okay, so this is the power of chanting the holy name. Of course, you have to chant good, you have to chant carefully, you have to do pure chanting. Then you get free from all… because why are we suffering? We're suffering because of reactions due to sinful life. Because we do sinful things, we get reactions and that causes us to suffer. But when you chant, then it gets free suffering. Go ahead, read more. When a person uh, circumambulates uh, Srimati Tulsi Devi, all the sins he may have committed are destroyed at every step, even the sin of killing a Brahmana. Mm. Now, if you kill a Brahmana, that's a big, that's a bad sin, that's very serious. You get a lot of punishment for that. But if you go around Tosi, then you get free of that sin. Right? When we go around Tosi, we chant the song Yani Kani Chapapani Brahma Hatya Dikani Cha Tani Tani Pradeshante Pradakshina Pade Pade. So there are a lot of sins in the material world. We can suffer a lot. But if we do devotional service, we can save ourselves from all the sin. Read Prabhu. But, but then we read in the Nectar of Devotion, chapter 10, 
a expecting the uh, Lord's mercy, paragraph 2, a devotee should not expect immediate relief from the reactions of his past misdeeds. Oh, well, I thought we could get free immediately. Now you're saying we cannot. We say it takes more time. And a devotee who is not perfectly freed from the resultant action should therefore continue to act in Krishna consciousness seriously even though there may be so many impediments. Mm -hmm. So, even though we're not yet pure devotees, we should keep acting. We should try to be a devotee. There may be many problems, but we don't give up. We keep going on. Then again, there are statements like Krishna's statement. Sarva dharma paritajya maam ekam sharanam vraja aham tvam sarva pape bho moksha yami masoja. Abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Bhagavad Gita 18.66 so Krishna is telling, just surrender and I will free you from all the sins. So it sounds like if we surrender, we get free immediately from all the sins. Srila Prabhupada has extended Krishna's statement in Bhagavad Gita to the spiritual master who is Krishna's representative. That if you surrender to the spiritual master at the time of initiation, you become free from all sinful reactions. Jai. So if you, if you get initiation and you're serious, you surrender, then you become free from all sinful reactions. What happened to all the sinful reactions? So which is it? So which is it? Are we actually free from all sinful reactions immediately when we surrender? Or do we gradually become free? So, what do you say? Are you free from all sinful reactions? What do you say, Sudarshan? Uh, yes, if we surrender to Krishna or uh, spiritual master, we are immediately free. That depends how we surrender. Yes. Krishna said, as you surrender, I reward you accordingly. Accordingly, yes. So? Depends on our surrender. Yes? Srila Prabhupada has given some other hints which could help us resolve this question. He has said that when the devotee surrenders to Krishna, Krishna will take charge of the devotee's sinful reaction and use the devotee's sinful reactions for the best benefit of the devotee. Girira Swami in a VIH Nectar of Devotion class. Yeah. That was in the beginning when we began classes in Vrindavan, before Mayapur, before MIHE. We only had VIHE. So Giri Raj Maharaj used to come and give class. He would give class on nectar of devotion. So when the devotee surrenders to Krishna, Krishna will take charge of the sinful reactions and use the devotee's sinful reactions for the benefit of the devotee. Whoa. How can we understand that? How can we be benefited by sinful reactions? Well, we should understand that the sinful reactions help us to under understand our real position. Sinful reactions, they're like a punishment. So punishment is for the benefit of the devotee. Krishna punishes us to help us to surrender more. Go ahead. Because in, yeah, because in his mind, a devotee may still maintain the remnants of his previous sinful mentality, the Lord removes the last vestiges of the enjoying spirit by giving his devotee punishment that may sometimes resemble sinful reaction. Although a devotee has to surrender to the Lord's devotional service until he is completely perfect in Krishna consciousness, 
he may maintain a slight inclination to enjoy the false happiness of this world. <laughs> All right. The inner mind, the devotee, we still have some uh, thinking about the past, about bad habits we had maybe before we became a devotee. So you still have that, you still sometimes remember what you did before you were a devotee. Maybe you used to smoke cigarettes or maybe you used to go to drink or eat meat like that. So that desire, this thought may be in the mind. But Krishna gives us punishments and it's like reactions. The punishments Krishna gives are like a reaction. The devotee is surrendered to Krishna until we're completely perfect, he may maintain a slight inclination, but a little bit we desire to enjoy the material world. So we've surrendered to Krishna, but we're not completely perfect in Krishna consciousness. So we still have a little attraction, a little attachment to the material world. So Krishna wants to take that away. The Lord therefore creates a particular situation to eradicate this remember, uh, remaining enjoying spirit. This unhappiness suffered by a sincere devotee is not technically a karmic reaction. It is rather the Lord's special mercy for inducing his devotee to completely let go of the material world and return home back to Godhead. Mm. Srimad Bhagavatam 10.14.8. Thank you, Prabhu. Well, yes, so Krishna wants to take away that little bit of desire which we have to enjoy the material world. So Krishna gives us suffering. So that unhappiness which we get, it's Krishna's mercy. It's not karma. Right? When you're suffering, Sitala, when you're suffering, it's Krishna's mercy. Yes. Just to help you let go of the material world. Because you're very attached to the material world. So Krishna wants you to go back to Godhead. So he gives you suffering. Not karma. You don't have any karma. Why? Because you surrendered to Krishna. So Krishna took away all your karma. Now what happens if you give up Krishna consciousness and go back to material life? Then your karma will come again. You'll get your, all your karma back and you'll get suffering. It will be very miserable for you. With bonuses. Okay. Yes, read. Tribulations imposed upon the devotees by the Lord constitute another exchange of transcendental bhava between the Lord and the devotees. Tribulations offered by the Lord to his devotee are different from the tribulations resulting from vicious actions. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.9.19 per word. Mm. So there's two kinds of suffering. One suffering comes from Krishna and one comes from our karma. <laughs> so the, when we suffer by the grace of Krishna, that's not like our suffering from the karma. So Krishna is the cause of difficulties for his devotees in order to increase their devotion. Srila Vaishnava Chakravati Thakur's commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam 1.9.19. Okay, very good. Okay, here's a nice verse. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Well, I had a question. Like, uh, <clears throat> Krishna putting his devotee in tribulation to bring him closer to him. So, where this point is start, Maharaj? 
Please, can we say that if someone starts chanting this round and following four major principles? So from that point on, Krishna starts interfering that way or when? Sorry, your voice is not clear enough, Prabhu. <coughs> okay. What I was saying that uh, here it is being mentioned that Krishna he puts uh, imposes a tribulation upon the, his devotees just to that is another kind of exchange between him and his devotees. And purpose of that is to bring that devotee closer to him. So uh, my question was Maharaj, when Krishna starts that dream, so it's it's from the point of when person starts following quality principles and sex chanting this rounds, or what what is the starting point? From when Krishna starts uh, that uh, from when you surrender to Krishna. Okay. <laughs> okay. And Krishna said, as you surrender, he rewards you accordingly. So when you fully surrender, then Krishna will really take care. Right? Okay. So it can be, it is possible before initiation of Alpha Maharaj? Huh? It is possible before initiation also? Yes. Possible. It's possible, definitely, because you started chanting and you started doing service to Krishna. You may not be initiated, but your relationship is there. You're connected to Krishna. Right? Prabhupada said, our Krishna consciousness begins when we start chanting. Just like Melin, Melin is not initiated yet, and Shashikan also is not initiated yet, but they're both doing devotional service. They're both chanting, they're both studying Prabhupada's books, so Krishna's taking care of them, Krishna's helping them. Maharaj, I have read in one of Prabhupada's books, where Prabhupada writes that if you read my book daily for two hours, you are automatically initiated. Oh, really? Oh, yes. very nice. Yeah. Okay. So it's a very good thing to do. Read for two hours every day. Every day. Right? Little Avatar, are you reading two hours every day? No. Huh? No, not every day, two hours. Why not? What are you doing? Less than two hours. Maybe one hour, half an hour. What are you doing all day? You've got the whole day. There's 24 hours every day. You don't have two hours to read Prabhupada's books. I will try my best to insist the reading. Yes. I thought you were dying. Okay. I thought you were reading six or eight hours a day. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Um, about uh, our reading, actually, I'm, I really want to read every day to our, but uh, I accept uh, too much other seva, like uh, cook for Papa disciple and sannyasis, and uh, so many different guests come to our home, and, uh, so many different things I should do. If I cannot do sadhana bhakti nicely, so I cannot accept too much seva, yeah? Well, I didn't know you were cooking for sannyasis. You never cooked anything for me. But I want to cook. You have so many cook. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. No. <laughs> yes, I have been trying to cook for you. This is my friend. Yeah, okay. Very good, yeah. Huh? But anyway, I want you to read Prabhupada's books, that's more important. Don't worry about me. You read the books, that's very good. You try. But I have a lot of time for listening the letters when I'm in the kitchen for cook. Oh, when you go in the kitchen, you play the tape. You listen to the recording. Yes, a lo lot of time listening because I'm in kitchen cutting vegetables. Very good, very good, yes. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. So Krishna is the cause of difficulties for his devotees in order to increase their devotion. 
So the difficulties are to increase our devotion. We have to remember that. When we get difficulties, this is Krishna's mercy. Krishna wants to make us a better devotee. Right? Maharaj, I have a question on this. Yeah? Like, uh, uh, where we, we were practicing, and we, we are practicing in Shiliguri Iskon Mandir. Uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of people, uh, few Matajis I've seen, who were very much devoted. Every day they used to pluck flowers, make flower bouquets for uh, uh, Radha Krishna and all. But something happened in their family, and the, that Mataji was saying that I'm very angry on Krishna, I am serving for Krishna so much and he is not looking, so I will not do seva. So she is not doing seva for the last two, three months. Why, why did she stop doing seva? Because she is having some family issues with her husband and all and she said that I am doing seva for Krishna and Krishna is not looking after me. Uh -huh. So she... Well, well, she has to take care of her family. That's also important, you know. You know, sometimes people are very neglectful. They don't, you know, you have to do both duties. You have, you have your duty to Krishna, you have to also do your duty to your family. You know, it's important. You know, if you go to somebody, if you go to some town and the lady comes and brings you a flower garland and she said, I made this garland for, for the guru, and then the husband comes and the husband said, you know, my wife went and made that garland for the, for the guru. She didn't cook any supper for, for the family. She didn't cook any food for the family. Our children came home from school, there's no food. And I came home from work and there's no food. And my wife, what she done? She went to get the flowers to make the garland for the guru. So that's not good. That's a problem. Right? So, yeah, they have to be careful about these things. Yeah, it, it, it's a problem. We have to, people have duties to do. They have to do both service to Krishna and service for their family. It should not be neglectful. Prabhupada said, a devotee is not neglectful. Just like the husband. The husband, he has to, he has to maintain the family. He cannot give all the money to the temple and no money for the family. So there has to be some, some, take care of both. You should not be neglectful. You should not be careless. Otherwise, you get problems. So that lady, she got a problem. She didn't take care of her home. The husband was upset. Yeah, actually her husband is a non-devotee and her husband is totally against her coming to the temple. Yeah, well, there are many husbands like that. There, it's a big problem everywhere. We get that everywhere. But, yeah, you know, yeah, so she has to be careful herself. She knows, you know. She knows her husband's not a devotee. And if she's still coming to temple, then she, it's her fault. It's not temple's fault, you know. It's her. She has to take care. All right. We'll go ahead. Here's the verse. It's a famous verse. For those of you who, are, who, who know verses, who like to study verses, this is a famous verse. It's not very, not very nice to remember, but you should remember. Krishna says, when I am very kind to someone, my dear Lord, one who waits for you to bestow your mercy upon him, all the while suffering the reactions and offering your obeisances, then it, he becomes eligible for liberation. It's his claim. So it means even you, though you're suffering, you're in difficulty, but you don't give up doing devotional service, then you can get liberation. That's the point. Okay? You don't, you don't need this for Bhakti Shastri, but in the Bhakti Vaibhav you would need this more. 
This is not for the, you don't need to remember this verse just now, but it's there. Okay. Someone read? Yeah. And shall I read or something? Yeah, go else? ahead. Go ahead. And all the stages of vicious life, sinful reactions become at once switched off by adoption of the devotional service. It appears that the process of extinction goes under gradual process, but actually it is stopped at once. The example of switching off of an electric fan is quite suitable here. The running fan, uh, after uh, being switched off, runs also for a few seconds by the dint of the original force, but actually the power of the movement is already stopped. Back to Godhead Magazine, 1944, Volume 1, Part 1 to 4. Mm. <laughs> 1944, wow, that's a long time ago. Eh? All right, so Prabhupada talks about vicious, vicious life, sinful reactions. So, why do we get sinful reactions? Yes, Sudarshan, why do we get sinful reactions? We get sinful uh, reactions so that uh, gradually we can uh, get out of this uh, material desires and material things and go back. Yes, and uh, cleans ourselves and cleans ourselves to go to Krishna. And what were we doing? What time? What kind of what activities do we do to get sinful reactions? Yeah, what do we need to, what, what things do we do? You know, what kind of activities do you have to do to get sinful reactions? Why? Does everybody get sinful reactions? Uh, no. No, not everybody gets sinful reactions. Like when, uh, when we surrender to Krishna. And yes? It's because someone commits sin, so because... Yes, right. Oh. So what are sins? What kind of activity, what do you do to get sins? The activities which are against the intention of scriptures. Like what? Like, this mainly we have this committing this poor, poor negative principles. When we don't follow, then they, are, they constitute sinful action, like meditating, uh, yes. intoxication. Yes, yeah. right, right. Yeah, these things, right? If we break the regulated principles, we do sinful life. Then we get reactions. We suffer. But if we take up devotional service, then devotional service stops all the sinful reactions. Of course, it has to be pure devotional service. So the example is given, you turn off the fan, but the fan still runs, it's still going around a bit. So, the sinful reactions are like that. They're still going a bit. It just takes some time, but gradually it will stop. All right? So, the cause... Three, three, three causes of suffering. Klesha tu papam tad bijam avidya cheti te tridha. Okay, so here you can see the stages of suffering. Oh, wait. Three causes of suffering. Here's the suffering. What's the cause of suffering? Sinful reactions. You do sinful things, you get... Why do we do sinful things? Why do we do sinful actions? Because material desires. Right? Do you have any material desires? In condition state, Maharaj, yes. Do you have material desires, Sudarshan? Yes, you everything have... is not yet gone. We have few material desires. Yes, we have material desires, right? 
And why do we have material desires? Because ignorance, avidya. We have material desires because of ignorance. Ignorance is the root cause. The cause of our suffering, ignorance. What are we ignorant about? We are ignorant about Lord. We are ignorant about Krishna. Yes. What else is, what else are we ignorant about? Our relationship with Krishna. Yes, we are ignorant about our relationship with Krishna. We have forgotten who we are. We have forgotten why we are here in this world. We are thinking, I am here to enjoy. I am here to, I'm here to have a good time. I am here to have sense gratification. And sense gratification means eating, sleeping, mating and defending. We are thinking, this is my enjoyment. So, we should remember this thing. Suffering is caused by sinful actions. Sinful actions come from material desires. And material desires come because of ignorance. That's why I say, if you read the book, if you read Prabhupada's books two hours a day, it will take away the ignorance. It's very good for us to take away the ignorance. Read the books. Go ahead, Prabhu. Two kinds of sinful reactions. Aparadham bhavet papam, paradham cheti tad daiva dvidha. Dr. Asamita Sindhu. Okay, two kinds of sinful reaction. One kind, aparabdam. Aparabdam means immature or unmanifested. Right? Can you see it? If it's immature, if it's unmanifested? Lila Avatar? No. No, right. You cannot see it. You understand me, Lynn? Yes, understand. Two kinds of sinful reaction. One kind of aparabdam. It's not manifest. It's immature. We, we cannot see it yet. And the other kind is the other kind is called parabdam, parabdam, and that is manifest. You can see it mature, just like what is the sign of some sinful reaction? Have you have you seen any sinful reaction in anybody before? You have all seen, of course. You have all seen. Give me an example, sinful reactions. Mataji, what is this Mataji's name? Uh, Mataji Naga uh, Shopa Mai. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Can you give me an example, please, about an, a, a, a sinful reaction which is parabdam? How, um, how will it be maybe, manifest? Yeah, maybe some um, uh, defects in the human body. Yes, right. Give an example. Somebody is born blind or uh, somebody is born crippled. Yes, yes, right. That is an example of sinful reactions which are parabdam, right? They may be invalid, they may be crippled. Another example. Sitala, Sitala, give another example. Doing the bad things, then this man will catch it. No, no, that that will get him, that will bring reactions. But I want to know what are the signs that they've already got reactions. Poverty and ugly features. Yes, somebody's poverty, no money, very poor. This is a sign, parabdam. Sinful reactions. Why is somebody very poor? No money. It is due to sinful past. Right? So 
somebody has no money. So what another? What's another sign? Ugly bodily features. Yes, somebody ugly bodily features. Not very, not good looking. This is parabdha karma. This is the sign. And somebody else, no education. Parabdha karma. Right? No education. These are the signs generally. So, when it's manifest, we'll see that. Of course. But sinful reactions can also be unmanifest. We have two kinds of sinful reactions. Some we're suffering from just now. Some we're suffering, and others that we're going to suffer in the future. We're going to suffer in the future. It will become manifest. Just like you put the seed, you put the seed in the ground, but it didn't grow yet. But it's in the ground, it's going to grow. It just takes some time. Yeah? You understand me, Lynn? Yes, yes. And I have a question. How can we to remove these seeds? If we have the sinful seeds, it didn't become mature. But now we know we have to do some sinful Sinful, sin, sin, we have sinful seeds. And uh, how can we to remove? How can we to, don't like it, uh, mature? It's possible. We will ask Sitala how to remove the seeds of sinful reaction. Very good, yes. Right. We have to do but devotional. I have, I have a question. But, uh, we are not pure devotee, but we have the desire to do devotion, but we, uh, we are not pure devotion. So Will we, uh, through the, the devotional service, can remove our sinful seeds? Yes, you have to become a pure devotee. Right? You're not pure devotee, you have to become a pure devotee. If you're not pure, then you'll keep suffering. Yes. Do you want to keep suffering? No. Then, then we have to become pure devotees. Okay. Right? The, every, all the devotees are pure devotees. If they follow, you have to follow the process. You have to do everything you're supposed to do. You have to chant, you have to read, you have to worship, we have to do everything. Okay, Prabhu, read Prabhu. Sinful activities are of two types or of two kinds, those that are mature and those which are not mature. The sinful activities for which we are suffering at present moment are called mature. The the many sinful activities stored within us for which we have not yet suffered are considered immature. The Nectar of Division, NOD, Devotion NOD, Chapter 1, Relief from Materials Distress, Paragraph 1. Okay, many sinful activities stored within us. We have not yet suffered yet, but they're there within us. So in the future, we will get the reactions, right? Maharaj, that means in future, either in this birth or in the next. Yes, right, in the future. We don't know, just like when you plant seeds in the, in the land, when you plant seeds, some grow quick and some take a long time to grow. So, the sinful reactions are like that. Some reactions come very quick, and they, some they take a longer time. Okay. Uh, Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, can this unmanifested uh, sinful activities be avoided by devotional service? Well, 
unman their unmanifested sinful activities means they're already there. The question is how to counteract them. Yes, Maharaj. Right? I mean, you say how they can be avoided. How they can be, you avoid sinful reactions by not doing sin. Right? We explained what is sin. Sinful activities. We do activities against the scriptures. Then we get sinful reactions. Yes, Lord. So we have to follow the scriptures. We have to do what we're supposed to do. We have to chant. We have to follow the process. If you engage in devotional service, you don't get sinful reactions. Right? Okay, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. So you want to avoid them. That's what you do. You, and if they're, of course, they're, some are already there, you want to counteract the effect of them. And we counteract the effect of the sinful reactions by devotional service. So in both cases, you have to do devotional service. But it, it should be pure devotional service. It should be devotional service without material desire. All right, but here we're going to see how to destroy the parabda reactions. Parabda means already, it's already visible. Just like, just like I have a very low birth. I have a low birth. I am born in the Western country. I am born in a non-Vedic society. I am not born a devotee. So I have a low birth. I am not born in the, in the Vaishnava culture. I was brought up in a sinful country. Everybody is a meat eater, drunkard, everybody does so many sins. So I have a lot of parabda reactions. Parabda means the birth, but birth is not very good, not very good looking, not very healthy, not very educated, not very rich. Right? Like that. This is parabda, karma. This is my reaction. So how to destroy that? Can we change that? Here is the verse. This is the verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, a famous verse, an important verse. It says you can destroy the reactions of sins. Yannama deha shravana nukirtanad yat prana vadyat smaranada pikvajit svadyopi sadhya savanaya kaupate kutapunaste bhagavanu darshanat. Right? This is the verse. Here's the translation. This verse is spoken by a lady, Devahuti. You see in the picture? You know who this is? Who is speaking? Kapil Muni. Kapil Muni, who is he speaking to? To his mother. Devahuti. Devahuti. Devahuti, right. So Devahuti spoke this verse. She said, even a person born in a family of dog eaters. Well, my family were not dog eaters, but they ate a lot of other things besides dogs. They, met, they ate all kinds of animal flesh. So even a person born in a family of dog eaters immediately becomes eligible to perform a Vedic sacrifice. Now who usually performs a Vedic sacrifice? You should be a Brahmana to do the Vedic. So even though you're born, you may have a low birth and a family eating dog, but you can do the Vedic sacrifice. How? If he once utters the holy name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, or chants about him, hears about his pastimes, offers him obeisances, and even remembers him. Right? So you may say, well, I chanted the holy name, but remember, you have to chant the name 
pure, without offense. If you chant the name pure, then you can do it. All right? This is how you destroy sin. Chanting the name, hearing about Krishna, offering obeisances to Krishna and remembering Him. Go ahead, Prabhu. Destroy, uh, destroying aparadha, aparad, aparadha reactions. My dear Uddhava, devotional service unto me is just like a blazing fire which can burn into ashes unlimited fuels supplied to it. This is aparabdha karma. Aparabdha means not yet visible. It's still in the form of seeds. It didn't come, it, you can't see it yet, but it's there, it's there, and in the future it will come. So how to remove it? By, it said here, by devotional service. Devotional service is like the blazing fire burns to ashes, the fuel, right? If you have petrol, you put the fire, then it will all burn. Go ahead, Prabhu. Persons who are completely engaged in the devotional service of the Lord Vishnu, the personality of Godhead, becomes completely extinct from all sorts of vicious reactions which either, uh, which either potential germinating, seedling or current by a gradual process. All right. So different stages of seed, you see? We in completely engage in devotional service. So we, the reactions are there in different stages. Potential, germinating, seedling or current. These are the different stage of reactions. Okay. Going ahead. The vices in their different stages of development are analyzed herein. Falun Mukham vice is that which we may be undergoing at the present stage of life. Bijam vice is, is in the seedling process by our desires of different types. Kutam is the prior to the stage of Bijam that is in the germinating state. Aparabdha is the fountain source of all and from this store house of vicious life all other stages develop and all these stages of vicious life becomes at once switched off by adoption of the devotional service. Jai. All the stages, there's different stages, you see. There's Bijam, Kutam, Aparabdha, Falan Mukam, all these different stages are all stopped by devotional service. So we get rid of sinful reactions. Go ahead. It appears that the process of extinction goes under gradual process, but actually it is stopped at once. The example of switching off an electric fan is quite suitable here. The running fan after being switched off runs also for a few seconds by the dint of original force but actually the power of the movement is already stopped. Right? Did you feel that when you became a devotee? That your karma all stopped? All your reactions? You didn't feel that? Yes, I, I did. Oh, you did? Yes. Oh. oh, very good. Well, not immediately, but gradually, yeah? Actually, it stopped, but the fan still runs a bit. It's still running, but it's already stopped. Okay, here's a nice diagram. Oh, wait. Sinful action, right? Papam, the sinful actions. So two types of sinful actions. One is the parabdha and the other is the aparabdha. Parabdha means not yet manifest. 
and the aparabdha on the para this is man of the para this is Oh, these are both. These are both unmanifest, right? All right. Sinful action. We've got parabda, unmanifest. They're both unmanifest. There's two kinds here. So parabda, it becomes first it's unmanifest, and then it becomes manifest. It becomes parabda. Oh, okay. and, th and this one doesn't immediately become manifest, it's kutam, indirect suffering, indirect, increased sinful proclivity. Increased sinful proclivity means you start to think more about sinful activities. You start to think more, you're more interested in doing sinful things. Before you didn't think about it, but somehow then you start to think more about doing sinful things. So that is kutam. Okay, so sinful activity, papam, sin. You get first aparabdha, unmanifest reaction. And then from the unmanifest reaction, it becomes manifest. You see it. Parabda, right? You did the sin, you got some reaction, and it wasn't manifest, then it became manifest. And then, on the other hand, this side, kutam. You start to think about doing sins. And, you, and then you get the desire to actually do sins. Right? And when you get the desire to do sins, then you do it. You see that the chain, it goes like that. Be kutam, bijam, and then papam, sinful activity. So it all comes about like that. Okay, here's the diagram from the book. Avidya. Ignorance. The, uh, the initial cause is ignorance. And the initial cause of ignorance causes sinful desire. Right? You see, it comes in here, desire. You have a desire and then you do sinful activity. And you do sinful activity, you get the reaction. First it's subtle and then it becomes manifest here and then suffering. But then also, you have more desire to do sinful activity. You do sin, just like people, they take drugs. They take drugs and then they want to take more drugs. And then they have the desire to get more drugs and it goes on a circle. They don't stop. They don't just take drug one time. They want to take more and more. And alcohol is like that also. You go drinking, you want more, you want more sins, more. It doesn't stop, it's a circle. You keep going, you get caught up, so much suffering. So this is the result. Read. Material desires. Although one may neutralize the reactions of sinful life through austerity, charity, vows, and other such methods, these pious activities cannot uproot the material desire, desires in one's heart. However, if one serves the lotus sweet of the personality of Godhead, he is immediately free from all such contaminations. So somebody may think, I will do fasting, I will give charity, I will practice celibacy. These things may, you may do these things. It may be pious to do that. But it doesn't take away the material desire. The material desire will still be there. But if we surrender to Krishna, then you get free quickly of all the contamination. 
material desires. What two uh, examples does Prabhupada use, use to describe the failure of, of other process to, uh, to free one from material desire? What two examples? This okay, who knows the answer to this question? What two examples does Prabhupada use to describe the failure of other processes to free us from material desire? What is Maharaj? Elephant bathing, bathing of the elephant? Yes, right. And the bathing Huh? Another is thief, thief. The other is what? Thief, thief. What? What happens? He steals, but then he goes to jail. He, he comes out again, again he steals. Okay. So the first one is the elephant, the bathing of the elephant. Yeah. Yeah. This, this sinful desire seed can be removed only by achieving Krishna consciousness. And this can be accomplished very easily by chanting the Maha Mantra or Hare Krishna Mantra as recommended by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm. So sinful desire sin. How do we take out the desire for sin? By Krishna consciousness, by chanting Hare Krishna. That is the point. We have to chant nicely. The bhaktas, by their transcendental devotional service unto the lotus feet of the Lord, become so overwhelmed with transcendental bliss that automatically their desires of material enjoyment stop. Desires for fruitive activities are strongly rooted, but the trees of the desire can be uprooted completely by devotional service because of because devotional service employs superior desire. Mm. Okay, so devotional service means superior desire. There's material desire and spiritual desire. So the devotees they have spiritual desire. Their desire is for the service of Krishna. So this is stronger than material desires. Ignorance. Uh, Sanat Kumar says, My dear king, the false ego of human being is so strong that it keeps him in material existence as if tied up by a strong rope. Only the devotees can cut off the knot of this strong rope very easily by engaging themselves in Krishna consciousness. Others who are not in Krishna consciousness but are trying to become great mystic or great ritual performers cannot advance like the devotees. Therefore, it is the duty of everyone to engage himself in the activities of Krishna consciousness in order to be freed from the tight knot of false ego and engagement in the material activities. Mm. All right, very good. So this is how we get rid of ignorance, by engaging in Krishna consciousness. This tight knot of false ego is due to ignorance. As long as one is ignorant about his identity, he is sure to act wrongly and thereby become entangled in material contamination. Material contamination, yes. So ignorant about our identity. If we think I'm the body, then we will act wrong. And the result of acting wrongly, we get material contamination. The contamination, false ego. False ego, right? And that is due to ignorance. So very important. But Maharaj, the uh, number of ignorant people are so high, means yes. they don't want to listen well. to uh, this.
No, okay, go ahead. Okay. There are many, many uh, snakes on the ground of, of the forest, and when a fire takes place, it burns the dr dried foliage, uh, uh, and the snakes are immediately attacked. Similarly, the blazing fire of Krishna consciousness is so strong that the snake of ignorance are immediately killed. Hmm. You understand this example? Yes, yes, yes. When there's a fire, so the snakes, they cannot run. They have to go on the ground. But the fire is on the ground, everything is burning. So the snakes are going to get killed. So are, the snakes are like what? What do the snakes, what do they represent? Ignorance. Yes, the snakes of ignorance, material desires are ignorance. They're immediately killed by the fire. Okay, so here's the overview. Klesh Agni. Klesh Agni means relief from material distress. Why are we getting material distress? It's because of our sinful past, because we did things, we did bad things in the past. Therefore, we're getting reactions. So, papam, sinful reactions. We have sinful reactions. And the sinful reactions are in two stages. Parabda means you can see them, they're manifest. But parabda karma can be removed by, by chanting Hare Krishna, by remembering Krishna, by offering obeisances, by doing some devotional service for Krishna. The Srimad Bhagavatam, third, chap third canto, 33rd verse, oh, 33rd chapter, 3rd canto, 33rd chapter, sloka number 6, tells us Devahuti's words speaking to Lord Kapila, how by doing devotional service, all of our sinful reactions can be destroyed. And then for the aparabdha karma, the aparabdha karma is subtle, it's not yet manifest, but it's there, but it's not manifest. So the example was given about the blazing fire. Blazing fire will burn to ashes unlimited amounts of fuel. And that's told in Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th canto, 14th chapter, sloka 19. And then the Padma Purana tells us about the four stages of sin that are vanquished. What are the four stages of sin? Who knows? Shobhamai? Shobhamai Ma Maharaj? Yes? Yes, Maharaj. I can try, Maharaj. So, uh, one is uh, what we may be undergoing at currently in this present stage of life. And other second one is Bijam, where the seedling has been put, and uh, we are. Uh, it is still in the uh, seed stage, and uh, before uh, before that, in the germinating stage, we saw the Kutam stage, and uh, finally, I think uh, up 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 Prarabdha is the, um, uh, the, the which is not yet manifest. Yes, right. Very good. Yes. Good, you've learned them. You. The four stages, apparabdham, the unmanifest stage of sin, and then the, the kutam stage, where there's an increase in the proclivity, means you, you, have a, you begin to show a little interest in the things. Just like in the beginning, you never thought about taking drugs or doing anything bad, but sometimes you get affected by the association, and bad association and they say, come with us, we're going to go and take drugs, we're going to go and drink, we're going to do bad things. So you get involved. So that is the kutam. Kutam leads to bijam. Bijam is a seed. And then parabda, where the action becomes manifest, sinful reaction. 
Okay, bijam, material desires. Srimad Bhagavatam, Ajamila, 6th canto, 2nd chapter, text 17. Ajamila tells us how to get free of material desires by chanting the holy name. Simply by chanting the holy name, we can counteract all the, all the material desires. Two examples are there. One is venereal disease. Sometimes people, they're very lusty. They're very lusty, they want sex. And they get, when they have sex and they get disease, they get the venereal disease. And when you get venereal disease, then it, it will be very painful and you'll suffer a lot and you have to go to doctor and it's very embarrassing and you have to get treated it's, and you feel very ashamed. You're so lusty, you got this venereal disease. So people gradually, they may get cured, but then they still want sex. The desire doesn't go away. The desire doesn't go away. So, again, they, they get involved. So this way, this is the way of material desires. They don't stop. One desire, another desire, another desire. And the other example is the elephant taking the bath in the water, throwing the dirt over itself. It gets clean. If we see in Mayapur, we have two elephants, you can see they get bathed, the, the, the men will bathe them, and they get nice and clean. After they get clean, then they throw the dirt over themselves, or they roll in the dirt. So that's elephant bathing. So people do like that. They do some sinful activity, and then they come to Mayapur, they give some charity, they may give donation, they may chant even Hare Krishna, and then they go away, and they go and do more sinful activity. And then next month they come again to Mayapur. And again they do some pious activity and then they go back and do more sins. So like that. Remember we spoke about that yesterday, which we called it Boga Tiaga. Boga Tiaga. Boga enjoying and then renouncing. Like that. So people try to enjoy, they do some sinful activities, then they try to counteract it by pious activity. So what they should do, they should do devotional service. They should take up devotional service and then they can stop all their sin. All right, and then avidya, ignorance, ignorance. That's described Srimad Bhagavatam, 4th canto, 22nd chapter, text number 39, Avidya. Let's go back to see that one again. That's yeah, about ignorance here. Here, ignorance. Uh, ignorance, become, uh, ignorance become great mystics or great ritual performers cannot advance like the devotees. Therefore, it is the duty of everyone to engage himself in the activities of Krishna consciousness in order to be freed from the tight knot of false ego and engagement in the material activities. Yes. To get freed of the false ego, we have to engage in Krishna conscious activities. Okay, so that was the fourth canto. Then also, Padma Purana gives the example, analogy, blazing fire kills the snake of ignorance. When there's a fire in the forest, all the snakes will be burned. So the ignorance will all be burned by devotional service. Devotional service is like the fire, it burns up the snake of ignorance, right? Yes? Yes. Best, best means of obtaining relief from distress. Devotional service, therefore, 
has the power to actually nullify all kinds of reactions to sinful deeds. This sinful desire, Siddh, can be removed only by achieving Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the, this sinful desire can be taken away, can be removed by Krishna consciousness, by devotional service. Krishna consciousness is so strong that the snake of ignorance are immediately killed. Jai. It is the only process that can counteract all three causes. What are the three causes? The causes of what? Counteract all three causes. Counteract all three causes. Three causes are misery, Maharaj? Three, uh, uh? three causes are misery, like the Adi, Adhyatmila, Adi, Bhautika, Adi, Delta. Yeah, it could be. It could three be. Three causes of uh, suffering that. Uh, three causes of. Reaction. Yes. Papam, Bijam, and Avidya. Yeah, I think that's right. That's it. The three causes of suffering. The three causes of suffering. The Kutam, Bijam, and Aparabdha. Or. or Material desire, material sinful desire, sinful activities, and ignorance. And they're all the causes of suffering. All right, so what did we do today? We looked at the six characteristics of pure devotional service. And at what stage they manifest, right? We said, first of all, first there is relief from distress and the beginning of auspiciousness. At what stage does that manifest? Sadhana Bhakti. Sadhana Bhakti. And then we added two more. We talked about derived the concept of liberation and rarely achieved. And that will manifest at the stage of? Bhava. Bhava Bhakti. And then there's two more. The only means to attract Krishna and immediately puts one in transcendental ecstasy? Prima Bhakti. Prima Bhakti, right. So there's three, three stages of pure devotional service. It's all pure devotional service. Sadhana Bhakti, Bhava Bhakti and Prima Bhakti, right? And at the different stages you get different things happen. Thank you so much. Yes. So now I have a question, like how one someone makes progress? Like one suppose someone starts Sadhana Bhakti, then after completion of Sadhana Bhakti, he moves to Bhava Bhakti and then to Prima Bhakti. Like completing every step and then moving to next step, or like mixing up other three steps that is also possible. Like someone can be performing sadhana bhakti but having symptoms of bhava bhakti and prema bhakti also. Is this possible, Manas? Well, uh, usually it takes a long time to perfect, to get through sadhana bhakti. Actually, we'll hear there's two kinds of sadhana bhakti. There's devotional service in practice according to the rules and regulations and then there's devotional service in practice which is spontaneous. So to get through sadhana bhakti, you know, it, it doesn't happen it's not like you do sadhana bhakti for six months or six years and then you'll be in bhava bhakti. It's not like that. It will be different for different people. So we're going to explain the different uh, stages, what happens at bhava bhakti. We'll hear bhava bhakti comes at the end. After, you know, at the end of this class, we'll hear about bhava bhakti and prema bhakti. 
what are the symptoms. But first you have to do practice, you have to do the devotional service and practice, then you come to Bhava Bhakti and Prema Bhakti. So you do the practice first, you do that, if you do that well, then after some time you will come to Bhava Bhakti. But you don't know how long it will take, there's no telling. Okay, then we talked about the term klesh agni. Klesha means suffering and agni means to put out, to, finish, to stop the suffering. And then the four kinds of effects of sin. Four kinds of effects of sin, what were they? But, but up, yeah, four kinds of effects of sin. What are they? Papam, Bijam, Kutam, and Avidya. Papam, Bijam, Kutam, and Param. Yeah, right. And devotional service has the power to nullify all the sinful reactions. So if you do devotional service, it can change all the, can stop all the sinful reactions. That is the power. And why devotional service is the best means? Why is it the best means? To get relief from distress? Because none of the other processes will help to get us free completely from all the different stages of sin. All the different stages of sin are removed by devotional service. It's the only way to get rid of all the sinful reactions. Some processes, you know, like if you do charity, that will get you free for a little while. But it won't get you free from all the sinful reactions. But devotional service will get you free from all the... Okay, read that Prabhu. Sudarshan? Haribo? Yeah, I think he's... Oh, can I read that? Go ahead, read. Yes, go ahead. Material contamination is very subtle. Its beginning is uh, fruitial and results, and how one suffers such results is the form of distress are part of great change. When one catches some disease, it is often very difficult to ascertain the cause of the disease. The practical injection to stop all the uh, fruitifications of the seeds of our sinful activities is simply engagement in Krishna consciousness. Okay, very good. The practical injection, right? The injection to stop all the seeds, Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada key. Yeah. All right, any questions? Anybody? Anybody has any questions? Narayani, any questions? Uh, no, Maharaj. And I have a question. Yes, Prabhu. What's your name? Bhakta Vatsa Narsama Devdas. Okay, Vatsa Narsingadev Prabhu. Bhakta Vatsa. Bhakta Vatsa Narsingadev, okay. I was wondering if this avidya ignorance is different from the tamaguna ignorance, the three modes of material nature ignorance. That is tam ignorance, tamagun, yeah, the same, yeah. The three, it's the three modes of ignorance, the false ego, the ahankar. Yes, that is tamagun, the ignorance. So we get free of it, right? The false ego is very strong, but that false ego can be removed by 
devotional service. Simply by doing. I have. Yeah. I have a question. It's about the how example of Ajamila. I come to understand about Ajamila. Where Ajamila can can get the liberation at the end of his life. It's only because her his son is called Narayana, so he gets liberation at the end of his life. If we have the children, and our children is also called the lost name, uh, and also can we get liberation uh, at the end of our life? Uh, so I I can't understand why Ajamila uh, gets the liberation at that, and he abandoned his wife. He get married with a prostitute. He, uh, he got married with another woman. He abandoned his wife. But uh, at last he got the liberation. It's only because his son is uh, called Narayana. So this is my, my question. I can't understand why. Mm -hmm. Well, he, what happened was he got free of his sinful reactions because he called the name Narayan. But you see, when he was calling the name of his son, he wasn't thinking that he's calling the name of God. He wasn't thinking like that. He didn't call the name, he didn't call his son Narayan just because it was the name of God. He just gave him that name. He thought, okay, you give him that name, you know. And and he would always call the name of the son because that was his youngest son. And so it happened when he was supposed to die. And so the Yamadudas came to take him. But then he remembered his son and he called for his son because the Yamadudas were very frightening. So he was afraid. So he called for his son to come and save him. And he called. And then at that time, because he was a Brahmana, you see, when he was a young man, he was a brahmana and he had a, a good wife and he used to be a very pious man and he used to worship even Shaligram. But he forgot everything and he became very fallen and very sinful. He forgot everything but then at the time of death when he was supposed to die, somehow he remembered about his past and he remembered everything about his past and so that because he called Narayan, so Lord Narayan came. Lord Narayan, or Lord Narayan's servants came. Lord Narayan didn't come, but his servants, the Vishnu Dutas, the servants of Lord Narayan, they came. And they told the Yamadudas, they told the servants of Yamaraj that you cannot take this man because he chanted the name of Lord Narayan. So they said, he's already free of all sins. So he destroyed all of his sins by chanting, because his chanting was, it was not completely pure, but it was not offensive. He wasn't chanting the name just to get free of sin. So his chanting was in the middle stage, it was Nama Bas. So he got freed of sinful reactions. And because he got free of sinful reactions, so he decided, because he was an old man, he was an old man, so he knew he didn't have long to live. He was supposed to die that time, but somehow he was saved. So he thought better he should go. He left the home. He left that woman. The woman was not a very good woman. She was a, a low-class woman, you know. She was a prostitute, as you said. She was low-class. And so he left her and he went to a holy place and he went to Hardwar, and he stayed in a Vishnu temple. And he stayed there and he served the deed, he did service, and then he gave up his body on the bank of the Ganga. He gave up his body at the bank of Ganga and then he went back to Godhead. So it wasn't just he chanted the name of his son, but after he chanted the name of his son, then he decided he has to go away, he has to stop all the sin. He has to stop all the bad things he was doing, had to stop all the sex he was having with his wife. He was an old man and he was still having sex with his wife and they had a young child. 
and they had many children. He used to steal and he used to gamble. He used to do many sinful things. So he, he had to leave all that and he went away to a holy place. He stayed in the temple and he got purified and then he went back to God. Hmm? Yes. yes. Maharaj, I had a question from previous section. Yeah. Like uh, we analyzed Maharaj uh, pure bhakti in two categories, like Swarup Lakshan and Pratash Lakshan. So Maharaj, uh, Swarup Lakshan was that uh, uh, Swarupa. Anukulena Krishna Silam. Uh -huh. Serving Krishna favorably. So, Maharaj, can we conclude that if we focus on this Swarup Lakshana aspect, then automatically we will become free from Jnana, Karma and other material desires? We can conclude like that? Mm, yes. Yes, pretty much. Yeah, you have to be careful because Jnana and Karma, material desires can come. They can still come, they're very subtle. So you may, we may cheat ourselves, we may think, oh, I'm doing pure devotional service, I'm doing this for Krishna, but you still have material desires. Mm -hmm. So or we may even think, I want liberation, we think I want to get liberation, and we, we, that is jnana, you see. So you have, you have to be careful, we have to know about it. Subtle desires can come. Yes? Yes, Maharaj. All right, any other question? Okay, we'll see everyone tomorrow. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki. Jai. Hare Krishna. Go back to Vrinda, Ki. Jai. Jai.